What's good? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Lots of news from MacBooks to the Apple Watch and that uh, iPhone 7 thing. But let's start off with the laptop that hasn't seen a redesign in over four years. Now, a Bloomberg report by Mark Gurman says the new revamped MacBook Pro models will have a smaller footprint, they will have a thinner design, but they will not adopt the wedge shaped style of the MacBook Air and 12 inch MacBook. Now, the trackpad will be slightly wider, and the report also confirms the rumored OLED touch strip will replace the function keys and the buttons will adapt to the application that is being used at the time. Apple's also planning on bringing its Touch ID tech to the MacBook Pro by integrating a scanner beside the new OLED keyboard display. The updated MacBooks will feature AMD's Polaris graphics chip that has the power efficiency and a 20% thinner design to fit inside the slimmer MacBook body. Intel chips are expected, but the specific processor has not been identified. Expect to see USB-C for the ports on this machine that will handle charging, data transfer, and display connectivity. The new MacBooks are said to be in the advanced testing phase, but will not launch until after Apple's iPhone event, with reports now pointing to that one on Wednesday, September the 7th. Apple's in desperate need of a refresh, and this will be a nice boost to reinvigorate the MacBook line and keep their Mac sales steady. All right, KGI Securities analyst Ming-Chi Kuo reports details on the new Apple Watch. He claims the Apple Watch 2 will feature a faster TSMC built processor and will include GPS, a barometer, superior waterproofing, and a higher capacity battery. Yes, please, on all the above. Now, the new Apple Watch will retain the same size and thickness as current models, and the once rumored LTE connectivity will not show up until 2017. The report does not confirm if we'll see an expanded Wi Fi capabilities or a FaceTime camera, and the new Apple Watch is expected in the second half of this year. Now, the report also claims that Apple will upgrade the first generation Apple Watch models with only the faster TSMC processor and better waterproofing. It will likely launch those in the second half of 2016 as well. All right, Apple also released new updates with the fifth beta for all of their software platforms. As iOS 10 beta gets closer to the final release, the tweaks are less significant. Now, Photos will rescan your entire photo library for facial recognition data. It's been fixed to work with that lovely iPhone battery case. And in the widgets panel, third party widgets have been darkened and control center icons have been updated with a new output icon as well. TVOS and WatchOS Trace also get tweaks, and you know who. Did you forget about me already? It's me, Marcos, Sierra. No, no, we didn't at all. All right, on to the latest iPhone 7 stories from Bloomberg that gives us new insight into two of its standout features. According to the report, Apple is planning to update the Home button. Now, this new Home button will be pressure sensitive and will give you a haptic feedback response that simulates a click when it's pressed hard enough. The rumored dual camera lens system on the larger screen iPhone will produce brighter pictures with more detail according to sources. Both camera sensors will each capture color differently, simultaneously take a picture, and then produce a single image that's based on merging the information from both pictures. It will also allow users to zoom in to take photos with more clarity, but again, it's exclusive to the larger screen iPhone. And we pretty much know there's no headphone jack on the new iPhone, and there have been trademark filings by Apple for what they call AirPods. A new report from Forbes says Apple is developing wireless earbuds with a custom low power Bluetooth chip. Now, Apple has spent the past few years developing this radio chip that could possibly launch with the new iPhone 7. The goal? To fix a problem that has plagued Bluetooth headsets, limited battery life. It was planned to launch in 2015, but performance issues stalled its release, so we'll wait and see. Oh yeah, if you want to see what the rumored A10 processor that will be inside the phone looks like, here you go. Ooh, ah. And if you're holding on to hope for an Apple TV streaming service, it's time to let go. According to Recode, Apple's new TV plan is a TV guide. What? Now, after giving up on putting together an Apple TV package of their own, Apple's working on creating a digital TV guide that would work on Apple TV boxes and others like iOS devices, the iPhone, and the iPad. Now, Apple wants to use networks and content providers' apps to help them direct people to those apps to watch content. And yes, that still requires a cable subscription. Bottom line, Apple is just working on an interface that's a launcher. Are you serious? Like after Apple's reports of their inability to work with cable networks, their blind cockiness, the fact that legitimate TV streaming services exist from others and Apple loses a revenue stream by just making an interface? This is stupid. And you know what we're dishing out? 
a bad apple. <laughs> and yes, last week I said iPad nano socks instead of iPod nano socks. So fine, even though you know what I meant, I get a bad apple too. Ew. Now you feel better about that? All right, let's announce the winners of our Airview card tablet mount. I asked you to tell me my Pokemon Go pickup line. And the winners are Carmine DeMatteo on email and DeFrank1 and Leah Salzen on Twitter. She has Pokeballs too. Now I instantly regret this contest after receiving hundreds of solicitations by grown men asking, can I throw my balls at you? Even YouTuber JSpecs asked me to pick two. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can always email us at theapplebite.cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple. <laughs>